an excerpt from the 14th video of Kevin to the Vlogalosians. How's it going? Um, today Alex wants us to talk about travel and whether we like to travel or don't like to travel and uh, my answer is I don't like to travel and I would like to like to travel. Um, I am a work focused person or at least a task focused person. Uh, I am always constantly thinking about getting stuff dotted, work and blah, um, whether that's work work, whether that's coursework, whether that's making videos or writing or just getting stuff done, and I'm not very good at relaxing at all. Um, and I think part of this is just kind of the American cult of work problem, so I don't know, and I, and I think it's, it's gotten worse since I've gotten older, so I don't know how relatable this is going to be for the other vlogologians. Um, but if we look at like the shortest vacation, which is not travel, but we look at the shortest vacation, it's a weekend, right? It's two days. Uh, the first day is, oh my god, okay. Um, it's like you've been sprinting for the week, working on stuff. And the first day is, okay, let me catch my breath. And the second day is gearing up to sprint for the next week. Um, so that's not a lot of time, and it's difficult to kind of come down from the anxiety of your day-to-day -day and then ramp up for the anxiety of your day-to-day. -day. There's not, like, a time in the middle there to be like, oh, I just can, like, wake up. I don't. I can, like, not use my alarm clock. It's great. Um, when you take a vacation, which doesn't happen very often uh, in the U.S., um, sometimes people like to travel, and uh, that's a good thing. Traveling is cool. Uh, there are a couple reasons that you would travel. You travel for business sometimes, or you travel uh, because you are interested in seeing what a place is like, um, or you are traveling strictly for the reason of getting away uh, from all of the things. Um, basically, it is the very expensive uh, version of unplugging your router. Um, that you cannot be contacted, and you're making it very explicit that even if there is a disaster, there's no way I could possibly help, so don't try and contact me. Um, and I think, so traveling for business is, is fine. We're not going to talk about that because I don't have anything to say about that. Uh, traveling for, to see places is really cool, but it also, it, it, and, and then the traveling for relaxation is very nice um, if it works. Um, there's a difficult problem when you're traveling to look at stuff, and that is that usually you're traveling on a vacation that's like a short, like you get like one of those a year, maybe. Um, and a lot of times during that time you're like, I don't want to... I don't want to race around and go try and see a bunch of stuff because I've been stressed out. I just want to, like, chill. But it feels very weird to be like, oh, look, I'm in Venice. I'm just going to stay in my hotel and take a bath and just watch TV or something and read and sleep. Because uh, that seems like a rather waste of a vacation. Um, but even then, as far as relaxation goes, the problem with the that I personally have with travel, uh, and part of this is just, like, my size and my neuroses, but um, I don't fit on airplanes particularly well. If I'm flying domestically, I will generally splurge to upgrade my seat where possible. And it's not really just that I, I physically am uncomfortable, because I can be physically uncomfortable. Um, it's more of, especially I was thinking about the time that I went to London, I was sat like this, which was uncomfortable and made me sore and stuff, but the bigger problem was realizing that I was the person who just by existing was making people around me miserable. The person right there, I, I mean, I was like this, but my shoulder was still digging into them and the person there. Um, and that's more stressful. So you think about like international travel. So you've got to first off pack all your stuff, which is stressful, trying to figure out what are the things I'm going to need. And then you go, okay, I've got all that stuff. You've got to pack it. You've got to make sure that it's small enough that you'll be able to carry it. And you've got to worry about what needs to go in your carry-on versus what you can check so that you know that if for some reason your check baggage get, gets missing, then you can go ahead and live off of stuff while you're waiting for that stuff to get found. Um, and then you have to make arrangements to get to the airport, which can be stressful. Uh, and you then have to worry about, oh my God, did I leave the stove on. I never actually used the stove, but just because I am traveling, for some reason the stove is going to be on. I'm going to come back and my place of living is going to be on fire. That's terrible. Oh no, did I actually, did I turn off my alarm clock? Maybe that's going to start blaring at six in the morning and all of my neighbors are going to be really pissed off because it's going to just go on and on and on. This is going to be awful. So you get to the airport, you go through security, uh, and, uh, you're really irritable a lot of the times and you're frustrated at the people who don't know 
what the TSA is and don't know, like, oh, maybe we should just, like, slip off our shoes and stuff before we get to the end of the, so we don't slow up the, fine, 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 fine. Then you go ahead and you go, I gotta find my gate, I gotta find my gate. You get to your gate and you're going, okay, I got there on time. And then you discover, oh, you know what, they're actually delayed for two hours. Um, two hours, two hours, two hours. What am I gonna do for two uh, Well, no, it's not actually two hours. Let's see, what is that? Um, oh, so it's two hours, that means they're gonna board. When are they actually gonna board? They're gonna board, oh, so that's like, so that's like an hour and 10. But I still need to be here to make sure I can get out. So, okay, I can't really go and, like, grab a bite to eat or anything. There's not enough time for that. So I'm just going to sit around. And uh, then, you know, you wait. And then they go, oh, and actually now it's uh, we're delaying by another 30 minutes. And it's on a gate on the other side of the airport. So you run across to the other side of the airport. And you get there. And uh, all of a sudden you realize that, you know, if I had just gotten food at the first place, I was, like, halfway there. So I wouldn't have had to race across the thing. And I also uh, would have known that I had the time to do that. But, okay, fine, 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 fine. You get on the plane. And you're sitting there and you try to get your stuff in the in the overhead bins because there's not enough space, which is really frustrating. Um, so you're sitting there, you're, you've got your feet stuff there and you've got things there and you're trying to get on the plane before anybody else so that you can be the obnoxious person who takes up the overhead bin space. And then you sit down and you plop like this and you wait. And you listen to the, all of the lectures where they tell you all of the different cool ways that you can die, which is super exciting and very stressful. Then you get off the plane, you've got to go through uh, security and customs and they are very irritable there because it's customs they want to make sure that you don't have your phone out you don't have anything that could record no electronics um so they you go up and you wait in this long line and they're scowling at everybody and and you there are all these cameras and you're going okay i am a terrorist apparently and you get up there and then they say um okay so well, you know why are you here uh, with that implication of how dare you enter our country, this is not okay, you must have a very good reason or else you're going to get booted. And you know that I don't even know if that I can book a plane back overnight. <laughs> I may just end up stuck in this little room for a very long time. That's going to be irritating. Um, and then they ask you the places that you're going to stay. What is the address of the hotel where you have booked stuff? And it's on your phone, so you don't know. Uh, so then you're freaking out about that. You know, can I reach out and get my phone? No, you can't. You go, okay, I think it's somewhere. And, you know, maybe if I mispronounce it, they're going to be like, oh, he doesn't know how our, what their street names are. How did, you know, he doesn't know. Um, but eventually you get through that, and then you go, okay, whew, I'm in a new place, and my phone doesn't work, and now how do I actually get to the hotel? And you have to freak out about finding that. Then once you get to the hotel, you've got to hope that maybe they have the room ready, maybe they don't. Maybe your credit card isn't going to process because you're traveling internationally, and maybe your credit card is going to go, oh, my God, something crazy happened. Even though you did call them to let them know, then the credit card transaction is going to get declined. You're not going to get into your hotel, and you're going to end up living on the streets in a country you don't know. Plus, if you're living on the streets in a country you don't know, it's very likely that your passport is going to get stolen at some point during the night. So do you know where the embassy is? Do you you know that you have the resources available to survive without a functioning credit card or the uh, or any place to stay while you worry about trying to get a new passport so you can just get home and end this miserable experience and then it's okay because you get in and then you're in your hotel and it's nice um, and that was your first day of vacation and then, like a vacation is like a week so you've got seven days one of them is the traveling process then the next day you're not really ready to just chill because you're really pent up and stressed out about that anxiety and then as you near the end of the vacation all of that stress happens in reverse and so the problem that I have with travel is that maybe there are people who are, are much better at having times of super high anxiety and then the just waking up and feeling all better. I'm not that. I tend to carry things and typically I find myself not really able to relax and enjoy myself until maybe the third or fourth day of vacation, at which time it's time to leave. So it feels like travel as a system is a little bit broken for people like me. But that's my thought on travel. I will see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.